Hello there, this is Curvy from KVB Collectibles, and this is our very first Funko Pop review. In today's Funko Pop review, we will be reviewing the They Live series with Alien, John Nana, and Alien Chase variants. This is a film that was created back in the 1980s, late 1980s, particularly 1988. It was created by John Carpenter. And he created this as a respond to the whole Reaganomics stuff that's been going around. And how he just has a straight up distaste for it. But the thing about, about They Live, it doesn't have to always have to be interpreted that way. In this movie, you could be, it can be interpreted by many other, variant, many other ways. It could be determined as an anti-consumerist film or a straight up... A straight up anti Reagan film, whichever comes first. But as you can see right here, this is a Funko Pop that I've always wanted for a very long time. I mean, I've started creating Funko Pop customs. Actually, not really. I've been. I created a custom Funko Pop right over here of the Alien They Live since 2018. I've been wanting to have this. I've been wanting to have this lineup for a while now but i didn't think it would never happen because of how controversial this movie is going to be and it's going to you know contradict with what funko pop is all about you know selling stuff and these guys are basically trying to make fun of it but anyway they managed to do it and i can say to me that this is just amazing how they managed to pull this off especially how they made a better skin than what i have the other one is just painted on there and it has, you know, clothes. And this is a female one right over here, the female alien that I used for the for the do-it-yourself mold. But with this alien right here, everything is there. Like even the little the little gum that he has right there, the little gum he has, they made that part even better than what I have. Because I didn't know how to do that when I was younger. But the skin right here, it shows the, dis the, the this decomposed face with the bug eyes that shine. Right here, you can see it all there. So basically, what are these aliens, you may ask? These aliens are supposed to represent, like, the hidden rulers or the folks out there who are ruling everything behind the scenes as they have taken over the human race from... They have taken over the human race by using subliminal messages to influence us to buy stuff or to obey and conform and never think for ourselves and be nothing more than a mindless slave to their design. And for the most part, it has been working like a success. So I'm trying to get this guy out of the box because I also have John Nada here. And I really like this concept a lot because it represents how even if this film was made in 2000 and uh, 1988, this film still holds relevant to this day. Like, if you take a look at what's going on in the modern world, you can say, say it kind of makes a whole lot of sense, you know, with all this, you know, shenanigans going on. I mean, you can fill in the blanks from there out. But anyway, what you got here is Roddy Piper, a.k.a. John Nada, John Nothing. This character is supposed to represent the guy who's basically a nobody, just an average dude trying to get by in life. And the guy who, who basically made the infamous bubblegum and kick-ass joke, or one-liner in this case. And also, you know, responsible for that really long fight scene. But anyway, John, John, uh, John Nada is supposed to be the main protagonist of this film, and he wears these shades so that he can see through the illusions that the aliens are basically trying to subliminally program us with. And I could say they've done a very nice hair job on this guy. Very good hair job. And without the glasses, he's basically, he basically sees things normally. But with the glasses, he starts seeing a hidden truth behind all of the subliminal programming that is going on here. And I gotta say, uh, John Nada, I mean, Brody Piper, he's played a really good role. It almost makes me feel as if he actually is playing, playing the character. Like, it, it's actually, you know, uh, Roddy Piper himself. Roddy Piper... 
actual uh, Roddy Piper's actual personality. So anyway, that's that's John Nada for you. And because of his sunglasses, I mean, I really wish they could make a Frank and a Holly Thompson one as well, as well as a police officer. That would be nice. But. He would use his glasses to see everything in black and white, as bland and boring as, you know, the reality that these aliens have created. And the aliens being in color is the, is what they really look like once the whole transmission gets, you know, torn down. But since John Ada has the glasses on, this is what he would, this is what they usually look like, what the quote unquote humans would look like. It will look just like this Chase variant right here, all black and white. And instead of the newspaper right here, say normal, you know, daily news and stuff from the media and politicians, it would say obey, do not question authority to try and poke fun at how, how the aliens have taken over the mainstream media and are trying to subliminally program us. That's their, that's the idea of the film. Now, whether that's real or not, that is left to be uh, to be interpreted, but it seems pretty real, real to me. But as terms of the aliens doing it, it's a nice concept. But anyway, it does. It's the same sculpt as the, the other one with this time with more skin. And before I before I go any further, I got to say that this lineup right over here is just absolutely amazing. It's like on the tier list of tier list of matrix but i just think this 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 movie is just much more better because unlike the matrix film where it's supposed to look cool and all this one's more straight to the point even so straight to the point that they one time you know took it down it was so successful in the box office so successful in the box office that the people in hollywood basically got mad at mad at the whole that the whole movie, what it was aiming for, so they decided to tear it down. I mean, we've seen the actor for Frank did it. He says, well, obviously it pissed somebody off. Of course it did, because, you know, this is one of those films that that nobody would actually review, and that's why it got lost over time, and it's probably become one of John Carpenter's most underrated movie ever. But I've been a big fan of this. I've always liked to poke fun at, at you know... What's really going on? Making fun of you know, advertisements, imagining them as like, what if they were this, these like aliens in disguise trying to like, subliminally program us? It might be based off a real story, but despite all that, I really was a big fan of this movie so much that I had to use a cardboard cutout of uh, the what do you call it? The, the Pennywise, the Pennywise. Uh, with uh, Georgie in the gutter, uh, Funko movie moments. I made my very own Cable 54 watch TV obey they live model over here that I just personally just like. And you can see it's all, I know it's all cut cardboard cutouts. They're just there for that. But I've made, I'm telling you, I am a really big fan of this because of how much I like the concept a lot. Sure, it's a B movie. It has its cheesiness and one-liners that are, you know something that that you should not take seriously but like overall i just love this concept so much that i just and hell i even made i made that little reference in the start of the movie they live they put that little they live part right there so anyway i wonder what would these guys look like in in this custom-made box right over here and i gotta say they just look ridiculously accurate like look at this I mean, imagine that. Look at that. Like, this is, imagine this is your news channel right here. It's Cable 54. We're here to propagandize you and tell you to obey and never question authority because we are your alien overlords. And of course, this movie just so happened to take, take place in Los Angeles. Takes place in Los Angeles. And, and it makes it all more relevant. Well, not really, but the point is, it, it, I like how they, they managed to make, make a real city a thing. And also how this movie managed to make really good work of its charity work. Because all those homeless in the movies are basically real-life homeless people to play as homeless people. And John Carpenter basically paid them, paid them to do their part. They gave them meals, they treat them well. Almost makes me feel like as if this movie is really realist. Is, I mean, it's so meta, the movie. It really is so meta, this movie. But I think, personally speaking, I think 
I think this is just better than better than the Matrix, in my opinion. It's just straight to the point. And even my own custom box right here, they live right here with unknown because you know at the time I didn't have no idea what to call to call the aliens. So they just call it aliens. And here's my own custom Funko box. And here's the Funko Pop box in the back. John Nada, Holly Thompson, the aliens, and the alien police. I wish I had more time to put Frank in because there's just so many, you know, good moments. So many good characters. So even the preacher, too, in the start of the movie. Collect them all. And you have this one right here in the top box right over there. It's all there. And I create my own Funko Pop, you know, number here. Especially this number. If you know a thing or two about this number, you can tell I'm trying to, you know, throw a hint of, like, what if it was actually real? In case you don't know what that is, you should, you know, look it up. And it kind of draw, draws very similar parallels to this movie. I mean, it's so... It's just so damn realistic, the movie. I just overall like it. So anyway, this is my very first Funko Pop review with... And with this being one of my f absolute favorite movies in the in the 80s, even though I'm not an 80s guy because I'm very, very young, I can tell that you can have your Ghostbusters. I'm going to stick with what they live because of how underrated it is and how very minimalistic and how realistic it can be at times. So anyway, this is I've always been a big fan of this day lives of they live being a Funko Pop and I just can't believe it just just came out. So anyway, this is our very first Funko Pop review. If you manage to find find any of these guys, my recommendation is to pick them up, especially if you want to hunt for a chase. If you're a chase hunter, you can go go after this one because it is just dope as hell. So anyway, this is my first Funko Pop review. Thank you all for listening and I'll see you in the next one.